What's up everybody? Today's vlog, I decided to uh, do a little something in the garage. I'm on call at work so I can't do much, so I decided to pull the boat in the garage and uh, get it ready for fishing season. It's just around the corner. Um, <clears throat> Cody and I will probably be going to Rife Gap next month, around our birthday hopefully, and trying to go slay some big smallmouth bass there like I did last year. But uh, I'm gonna go over <clears throat> what I have for setup on my little 14 foot boat. Nothing too special, but did some mods to it. You guys might like to see and do on one if you have a boat like this. But uh, I'll also go over Mystery Tackle Box. I've been doing that for a while. They send a box monthly with lures, and I'll just kind of show you a few of the boxes and what it comes with, see if you think it's worth your money. So stick with me here, and we'll go over all this stuff and hope you enjoy. Let's do it. ahead and start out with mystery tackle box send a box every month I think I have the pro is like 25 bucks a month I'll go through a couple of those I have looks like two four six seven of them that I have collected over the winter just haven't had the chance to put them away because the boats had the cover on it you can choose your species and I did bass for a while and then kind of through the winter I went to walleye because I do a Lake Powell trip with my dad and grandpa every year and try and get as much walleye as we can because we love eating walleye, they're so good. But uh, I'm going to probably record that trip this year so you guys can see it. It's awesome, we usually catch hundreds of fish and just pig out on fish for dinner every night and it's an amazing lake if you've never seen it. We'll have some Rifle Gap trips, Elkhead Reservoir up by Craig, like I said Lake Powell. Might try and do some pike fishing up by Stagecoach, kind of south Steamboat Springs, but <clears throat> we'll see how that all goes. And then um, after I go over a few of these boxes and let you guys see what's in them and see if it's worth the money to you, we'll I'll get my boat cleaned up, put all these lures away I have laying out, and kind of go over my little boat setup. I've tried to make it the best I can for bass fishing. And uh, so far, I've really enjoyed it. It's not the fastest boat on the water, but catch fish and have a good time, that's for sure. Alrighty, let's go over a few of these boxes. This is how they come in the mail. Mystery Talk Box Pro. Um, go ahead and open up this one first here. So, this one you got a football jig head. And it's usually new new kind of products that people are trying to get their name out there. Stuff that's not super popular, but there's actually some really good tackle that comes with. There's a Strike Pro, that's pretty good stuff. Booyah Popper, awesome for Lake Powell. Striper boils and early morning bass fishing there. And then uh, <clears throat> some twirly tail type grubs, kind of like a Cinco almost. Extreme squid scent on that one. But anyway, <clears throat> some tubes. Nice salty little tubes. Those are killer on smallmouth. I guarantee that'll be good at Lake Powell right there. Some nice mustad weedless hooks. And then <clears throat> it comes with one of these cards in every one. Shows what everything's worth. See, so I paid 25 bucks and it's Definitely a little more than that, according to them. Each one comes with a dibble. <clears throat> it's kind of some fishing tips and techniques. It's pretty good. And then you also get, let me get it out of here, a sticker with each one, which I just throw every sticker on my boat on the inside here. You'll probably see that later on in the boat review. but. So there's a bass box there. Let's go over another one here. This one's a walleye box. 
action rig, net bait type worm, with swim tail worm, smart baits. The thing is though about these packages they send, I can get this down here. The soft baits they send don't have a whole lot of what, like if you go to the store and buy, you know, you're gonna get more than four. That's the only downside about this box. Here's another what's inside your box there. Here's some I haven't really seen before, I'll have to learn that. Fintech knuckle ball jig. Catch Company, that's a pretty nice looking little bait there. The Death Stalker. And then some walleye. <clears throat> Those are awesome right there, Lake Powell. Catch and walleye. And a jerk bait, which I use crap out of for small amount. And then another sticker. I'll go over one more box here. Charles Worms scented. That one's closer to the usual amount you get on soft baits. Big bite baits. Swim tail on them. There's your dibble book. Once again. And then we've got some liquid scent here. Liquid mayhem walleye attractant. We've got a Yozuri. Special color it says. And then a Strike Pro, <clears throat> kind of like a rattle trap. Another good one there. Beads might be pretty good for some trout right there. The sticker again. Kind of some fun stickers every once in a while, but so you saw a few boxes. See if it's worth your money if you really want to go for it. But uh, yeah, that's what's in them. Sometimes you get more in a box, sometimes you don't get as much. It just really depends on the month, but I kind of liked it. You can really stock up on some new tackle that you might not be able to find as often, you know, stuff that might work real good, stuff that might not, but there you go, there's that. So I'm gonna go ahead and get this boat cleaned up all this way, and then I'll show you my boat setup. I just got all the mystery tackle box tackle put away and uh, I decided I'd go ahead and show you how I organized my tackle just maybe give some people an idea or maybe you can give me some better suggestions for storing my tackle but I just have one of these Cabela's bags and then uh, I just label all the top of the boxes like spinner baits, jerk baits, top water jigs, chatter baits, crank baits, hooks and weights, and then I got all my ready baits and miscellaneous. That's stuff like if I cut a sink weight or a weedless sinko or a beaver off, I'll just throw it in there. It's already got the hook in it, so I can just remember to grab one out of there next time I go to rig. And then for all my soft baits, I just bag them and label them. Got all my grubs, and then drop shots and worms, sinkos and twitch baits, soft top water, um, tubes, gotta love tubes, all my craws and beavers and creatures in a bag, and then uh, swim baits and swim tail soft baits stuff like that so it's all in these gallon ziploc bags and then i just stuff them all in this soft bag and then i can put them down in my compartment here and keep them stuffed away and out of the way of everything else so that's how i store all my tackle um that's pretty much about it for my tackle uh, i'll go over the boat next and See if I can give anybody some good ideas for uh, what you can do with these little boats. They can actually be pretty sweet little fishing boats. So we'll go over that right now. All right, here she is. It's a, I believe, 1980s, late 1980s Miro Craft. See there, Miro Craft. And uh, it's got a little Mercury 200 on it. It's a little 20 horse. 
it does pretty good disconnectable fuel tank and then I put this Lowrance hook hook 3x on it um, the wires for it run up to my battery compartment and then my transducer I have right here on the back but uh right here is my battery compartment battery's not in there right now and uh when i got the boat this front deck was already on it this from this line forward and then it had another well and then another bench seat just like this is here so i went ahead and built an extra deck between the two bench seats here and uh it's awesome all that deck room is nice for moving around if you have another person in the boat two people can fish up there pretty easily i built in this compartment here's my soft tackle swimming trunks still got some old snacks and beer cans in there from fishing season last year and then i went and picked up this Minn Kota Edge, I believe it's a 45 thrust, and it'll move this thing. I went to uh, Pelican Lake in Utah, and it's uh, got a lot of reeds and whatnot in Pelican Lake. And uh, this thing can pull that boat right through the reeds, just chopping them all up and going to town. So it's done good. I'm loving it so far. That just hooks straight up the battery compartment. And uh, that's pretty much the big additions I've done to it. I'm wanting to build a deck on the back here on this. And I'll put another seat on this side, bolt it down to the board, and then uh, kind of have it come back, come back into here and up over there. And then I might leave a little cut out here for all these cords and whatnot. And then I might try and figure out how to do some kind of hinge that I can flip up to get that fuel tank out and also store stuff back there. But yeah, that's what you can do to these little boats. Have a nice bass fishing deck on there. Work with what I got. Can't really buy a fancy bass boat, so this will do the trick. I can catch fish in it, that's for sure. But uh, this deck, I just bought the plywood, and then I had to cut it to shape. Kind of a curved cut there is a little tricky, but and then go to Home Depot and you can buy this outdoor carpet. You know, it dries out quick. Your hooks don't really stick in it too bad. It's good stuff. <clears throat> but yeah, I'll probably do that same thing on the back. Have two seats little fishing deck for a second or third person it'll make it a lot better instead of two people up there whipping their hooks around but yeah this is what Cody and I'll probably be taking out fishing to rifle gap here next month we'll film that it'll be a really early season fishing trip uh, like I said I fished it last year around mid-April kind of beginning of April mid-April I killed some big smallmouth on the deep diving jerk bait. They were staged out on a 20 foot ledge, so hopefully we can get on them again this year and get it on film for you guys, get some fishing action in on our YouTube channel and Facebook and Instagram and get this old boat back out on the water catching some fish. So I think that'll pretty much do it for this vlog, getting the fishing gear and the boat ready. But uh hope you guys might have learned some tricks on souping one of these old boats out or making them a little fish a little more fish friendly, fisherman friendly, I guess you'd say. Pumped up to hit the water and go catch some pike and smallmouth, largemouth. Should pass the time until I start shed hunting and <clears throat> scouting for the up and coming elk and antelope season. So Subscribe to our channel 
and then I got some links to the videos of our recent postings and uh, help support us. We're all about conservation and protecting our public lands and fishing our public waters and keeping all that so we can keep enjoying it and you guys can all enjoy it. So hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, stay tuned for the next one.